Hi, thank you uh, for having me here. Uh, it's great to be in Warsaw. Uh, I'm here to talk about um, copyright reform and the need for real data uh, for politicians, to, for evidence-based uh, policies. Uh, just a quick introduction, I'm a lawyer, I'm an information lawyer from Amsterdam, currently at the Oxford Internet Institute to sort of re-educate myself to a social scientist, an internet scientist, they call it at the Institute. Um, and before that, I worked in the European Parliament uh, on information policies and notably on things like ACTA. This is the wrong button, I think. There we go. Um, for, it, it, was a, it was a great time in the European Parliament. I had, in two years working there, I had sort of an MBA in European politics. Uh, because ACTA showed every single political trick. Yeah, everything was pulled out to get the street to through. And we were on the other side with a lot of people in this room. Uh, trying to explain why it's actually not a very good idea to have this treaty. And uh, thank you, Poland, for having these demonstrations. This really showed that all the legal talk and all the policy talk that we were doing, that actually people on the street also had difficulties accepting ACTA. Uh, at a certain point, we got videos in, from tens of thousands of people in Warsaw on the street climbing the barricades and uh, shouting songs and chants against ACTA. And that really got uh, politicians' to attention. And I think uh, after so many failed internet enforcement treaties and bills, I'm talking about SOPA, PIPA, ACTA, the Hadopi in France, everything is failing. No, nothing has worked properly yet uh, with, with regards to, to copyright enforcement online. So I think we really have their attention of the policy makers. You, you see, I've got some copy pastes from uh, election manifestos from the last years. Uh, people saying things like uh, copyright enforcement should not lead to restriction of internet freedom or the interests of the creator and the public interest must be balanced. These kinds of things. There's a lot of parties who kind of call themselves progressive or want the youth vote. They're really interested to uh, move this copyright reform thing forward. There is an understanding that something's wrong, but they need input. They need real evidence. Uh, and I think they're actually looking for this input from people like the people sitting in this room who claim that they understand how the internet works, that have gone to politicians that have said, don't do this active thing, don't extend copyright further, don't uh, strengthen everything, but th think about a balance. So they're, they're looking to speak to us. Also, companies are trying to understand that, you know, their lobbying hasn't worked, why hasn't it worked? They really want evidence from us. I think, though, um, leadership in this whole copyright debate is going to be pretty difficult. Uh, this should be... Hold on. That's a moment. Uh, this should be the first bit of information that we give to policymakers. Uh, it's a quote I heard at a conference the other day. Yes, it's a, uh, I heard this the other day. I, I can't remember who said this, or someone said this quoting someone else. And unfortunately, I can't distribute this properly now. But I think it's a great sentence. Co copyright is a 19th century information lock reinforced by 20th century steel and restraining the 21st century information economy. Here you have that lock. There is the, uh, the reinforcement. Um, you see, no one is actually really in charge of copyright anymore. Uh, if, you, if you want to reform it, you're going to have to break up a lot of international treaties. You're going to have to break up... Um, free trade agreements that are going on. I'll, I'll start at the bottom here. Copyright, as we all know, is about 300 years old, the uh, uh, Convention of Anne. And then we have the Berne Convention, which is 130 years old. Uh, on top of that, we have the Rome Convention. This is a very simplified version. And we have TRIPS, and we have the WIPO Copyright Treaties. On top of that, we have all these international treaties, each time laying down the minimum protection of copyright. So basically, there's no real central authority anymore to go to and knock on the door and say, you know, maybe we should reform copyright in some way. This system is pretty much locked. Um, and the problem is that I've seen in Brussels as well that there are so many lobbyists arguing in favor of keeping this alive, keeping this uh, 19th century lock, which was re reinforced last century when their business models really flourished and their business models aren't flourishing anymore, but they're trying to, to keep it. And this sounds a bit harsh if there's a lobbyist in the room. I'm sorry, but this is what I've experienced personally. Um, so 
th these lobbies that they out represent the, uh, the the representation of internet users. So there are a few organisations that do a really good job in Brussels. Some of them are in this room. Uh, but to be honest, if you go into the European Commission and look who's actually working there and check their CVs, you'll see that a lot of them have actually been working on the copyright enforcement side of, of the whole debate. Uh, and what they're doing is they're trying to strengthen laws further, uh, trying to um, make new trade agreements. They actually signed ACTA with the European Commission. And what they're also doing is they're trying to export these laws further to developing countries, make it a worldwide accepted thing that copyright minimum protection levels are at a certain level and not different. Uh, however, I think politicians are now realizing this. After having fa failed in so many different bills and treaties, uh, they're realizing that it's actually insane. insane. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Quote from Einstein, and he's completely right, uh, after having failed so often with the Hadopis, the ACTA, the SOPA, and the PIPA, it's time for something else, and policymakers are realizing this. Now we have, uh, in the European sphere, we have the European Parliament elections coming up in June, and then we have new commissioners being installed at the European Commission a few months, a uh, half year later. So the campaigns are going to start now for politicians, and politicians really want to have this copyright reform in their agendas, and they want to show that they understand the internet. Uh, as you've probably seen in the US, there were a lot of people on the streets protesting with signs. It's no longer okay to not understand the internet. I think, I think they're right, and I think politicians realize that. However, what they're looking for is real evidence. They're not looking for new uh, emotional arguments, uh, such as, you know, if, there, if we weaken copyright, then we'll kill uh, creativity, but we'll kill culture. Uh, it's probably not a very good idea to patch up the law again, find the internet being a new technology and then creating new laws. I think we really need to look at this. Now, I'm, I've, I'm about to start a research in Oxford uh, next week, actually, and it's about gathering uh, evidence. Um, basically, the idea of why people start research often is you uh, have an idea, you have a hunch, you, you, you think something's wrong, and you want to prove it. Uh, of course, you have to be very neutral. You have to, uh, it's got to be peer-reviewed. Um, but I had an idea as well. Uh, and this is the data I want to bring on the table. But I think of all the presentations I've heard today, I think most of them can be researched in some way. There can be some data created. Now, here behind me, for example, you have the, uh, the value chain of creating creative works pre-internet and probably still in, in the uh, newspaper uh, industry, for example, you have a journalist, writes his piece, gives it to the editorial board, they pass it on, they accept it, put it into the newspaper, pass it on to the printers, and it goes to distributors, they bring it to the shops, and at the end it gets diffused to consumers. Uh, obviously, it's a very abstract and simplified version, but this is more or less what copyright regulates, these kind of processes. You can, you can look at the law and you can see where uh, the provisions of copyright apply to this model. Uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, this copyright cannot regulate the internet, which is uh, an information diffusion model as such. It's, it's far more complex, it's, uh, non, uh, or it's, it's dynamic, it's non-linear like the other one. Uh, and I have this hunch that the provisions of copyright, however well meant they are, are not actually regulating the intermediaries or the users or the creators who may choose different paths of, of publishing their, um, their works. So what I aim to do is um, create a model in, about the difference uh, from the analog version to the digital uh, information diffusion, checking how information behaves, then seeing whether judges are able to apply that reasoning in their uh, in a court decision. So I'm gonna, I'll be coding loads and loads of uh, decisions. And what I aim to do is bring to the, the copyright discussion table uh, something like this. Very simple visualization. I'll probably improve it, hopefully improve it, as my research goes along. But uh, on the one hand, you have provisions where you can say that copyright is achieving its aim, so reality and law are uh, aligned. And others, you can maybe see that uh, copyright is losing touch a bit. So some court decisions are actually in line with 
why copyright was written. Others are you know, very difficult to argue or things like that. And then the final ones, which I know there are a few already, I've, I've done some research, is where law and reality are really far apart. Um, the, I'm going to try and create the data and do my best. Uh, get as much different uh, theory and, uh, and data work in there. And I urge you all to also get in touch with me to, to set this up in Europe. I, I know in, in Chicago and in Los Angeles there are a lot of people working on this, on uh, empirical legal studies of intellectual property, uh, trying to really bring the evidence to the table. And I'm not so aware of people doing this in Europe. I know my, my colleagues in Amsterdam, they are uh, signing this up as well. And in Oxford, we're starting this. Uh, if you have any more information, if you want to start a research like this, please do get in touch. And uh, I hope to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Dziękuję bardzo.